What on earth would get me to buy comics from this place again? Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up an order of comic books that I placed, I almost can't even believe I'm, I'm saying it, I, I placed another order with Midtown Comics, I, I really really was doing well, <laughs> I was I was uh, on a, a, I think it was almost a four month break, maybe closer to three, but uh, I just couldn't help myself and you know what would make me want to consider ordering from them again they had a sale uh, I don't know how else to put it and I just kind of did the math in my head and I thought about the risk I thought about that horrible uh, square boxed order that I received with all of those damaged books and I just thought to myself well if they are having a pretty steep discount uh, and a sale, and if I'm getting books for between a dollar or two, even if they did come in damaged in transit or just because they packed it in some sort of ridiculous kind of way, that the risk was low enough because the books were on sale. Uh, and in this order, I, I've done a couple of things that I've done in the past. One is certainly I've seeked out uh, steep discounts, but the other is stop buying a good book one at a time and there's a few books in here where I just saw an opportunity to get uh, pretty good value books and bought several copies at a time. Now when I sort of go hunting online what I used to do is I would hit the online comic book store and would notice that a store like Midtown was having a sale and then I would start to search or sort and I would realize and it's hard for me to admit this, but several hours later, then I would finally have an order. And a lot of times, too, I'd be spending so much time searching for books and hunting for books that by the time I checked out, the books were gone. Someone else came in and bought them, and then I'd be really frustrated and disappointed. So I changed that uh, when I started to develop the spreadsheets and analysis and things like that. And as I'm going through and finding value picks and sharing those out online, that's actually enabled a better way for me to search and one of the things that I'm putting together that I hope to share out with you all sooner than later are specific worksheets for different sources meaning I have my spreadsheet tell me which are the best books according to my analysis to buy from Midtown Comics or any other resource or source that I buy comics from and it could be eBay, Atomic Avenue, things from another world, it doesn't really matter. But a lot of times what I end up doing is I will find good books to buy, but it's kind of scattered across the internet. And when I find that one book that I do want to acquire and purchase on a particular day, I need to see what else is available at that store. So I've isolated that in a way where you can actually dig in. And if you're interested in placing an order online, it will spit out in a prioritized order which books to buy. Now, I did that, but then I kind of went back to my old habits where I was like, well, let me just have some fun. I, I, it's Again, I don't have a local LCS that I call mine. Uh, I don't have a lot of local shows that I go to, but I imagine what I do online is very similar to what you may be doing in person uh, when you're hunting through back issue bins or looking at wall books and things like that. So I've got sort of my base set of books that I wanna order from Midtown, but I also noticed the sale. Let me just do a little bit of browsing. So instead of taking several hours, maybe I only spent a half an hour to an hour, but I did certain things like searching for artists. And one of the things that, uh, it, it annoys me, if I could be honest, where you have certain uh, folks in the community, uh, hype artists and other speculators where they're, they're all on board with a specific artist. And you can tell that they're hyping it because they probably got some free kickbacks or they know somebody from, from an online store and the online store also has a YouTube show and the speculator gets invited. And it's really easy to tell that they're all somehow affiliated with each other. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like, I feel like uh, 
Chandler on Friends, could you be more obvious? But instead of looking at that and getting annoyed and frustrated, what I tend to do is when they're pushing a certain agenda or artist, I think of an artist that maybe I like that is not being pushed anymore. Maybe they were, but it's cooled off. And one of those artists is Josh Middleton. Uh, did a, an amazing run on uh, Wonder Woman and Batgirl. And so I spent some time searching and lo and behold, uh, Midtown had a nice run of Batgirl Middleton covers. And they were also part of this steep discount sale. And I picked those up. So that was kind of my browsing uh, experience was I found the specific individual books that I wanted to pick up that were on sale that I considered to be of good value at that sale price. And then in addition, kind of treated myself uh, to some cover buys based on an artist that I like that is currently not the, the center of attention in the comic book community. So that's kind of what I like to do is when you get a lot of aggressive people really pushing their agenda, to me, it's a huge turnoff, and I end up kind of going in the other direction and looking again at more of your already established, tried and true creator veterans or well-known creators, books, keys, and so forth. So let me get to the unboxing of this order. My fingers are crossed that everything uh, came through okay. Everything came through in transit without any damage. Everything was packed appropriately. Only one way to find out, and that's to open the order and take a look. Okay, here we go. Here's that order from Midtown. Uh, already from the looks of the box. Um, looks like it got dropped on the corner there. I don't know how else a box like this gets totally mashed up like that. Uh, so I also picture the comics inside also getting dropped right on their corner. Uh, but uh, let's just open it up and hope for the best. All right, so there's that paper bag. Uh, it does look like it was uh, torn a bit, uh, and I think it's just the pressure of the books inside. Thin little protective wrapper. And when they shift around, it starts to tear the bag. To me, that's an indicator that the books are not properly packed because they're just constantly moving back and forth. Inside the box, uh, with Midtown, for me, in my experience, it's one of the sources that I've received the most 9.8s, but that I've had the most uh, frequently damaged orders and just terrible customer service experiences. Uh, you just kind of take the good and the bad. So let's stay positive, hope they're not damaged, and take a look at these great books that I got on sale. All right, uh, first book is Thor. This is volume four, number eight. Russell Dodderman did the cover art. Uh, this was one of the books that I found that was on sale and I grabbed multiple copies. So right now it's uh, just at the top of the stack by itself, but uh, there are several others of this book in there. And it's just one of those books uh, with the Jane Foster Thor run that is valuable, very difficult to get in high grade with the darker background. And it was a book that Midtown had in stock and not only did they have it in stock, they put it on sale, so I grabbed it. Here's Superior Spider-Man 32, and then it uh, looks like, yeah, here's a run of those Middleton Batgirl books. So uh, I simply just put Middleton into the Midtown search, and a lot of these books came back. This is Batgirl 27, and what I love about these is, uh, you know, as with most books, you need to get them in high grade, you need to get a 9.8, it's just sort of a, a general statement. But uh, there are specific collectors of Middleton, specific collectors of Batgirl. Um, and these books just, they're just great art pieces in the slab. But it is kind of a 9.8 or bust sort of situation. Uh, this is Batgirl 29. Love this one in sort of that uh, tilted frame. Batgirl number 30. Batgirl number 34. Batgirl 35. And Batgirl 36. Now, 36 is still a, a great Middleton cover. It, it looks a little bit more kind of in an animated style. Um, some of these, they almost look like painted covers, but these are all just amazing and fantastic. And it's not that Middleton is a forgotten artist. I didn't mean to imply that. 
uh, before I opened up the order. It was just, what I meant was it's just not an artist that is regularly pushed the way that some of these store exclusive artists are. Okay, this was an example of a book that I had been buying <laughs> and been buying them one at a time, and I'd actually ended up paying. I think sometimes even twelve or thirteen dollars for this. This is Thor, God of Thunder, number one. Everybody looks at number two because it's the first Gore the God Butcher, uh, but number one has some value, and I grabbed five copies. Like I said, I'd been buying these for anywhere from like ten to twelve or thirteen dollars, and Midtown put them on sale at like seventy-five percent off, and just wanted to get them all basically right around cover price. And after I go through the comics, I will show you what I paid for them and compare them to fair market value and everything. But uh, this book has uh, some value raw and, and some value when graded. And so if I could get these for uncover price, I figured why not? And then here are the rest of the Thor number eight. I got five of these as well. So I had one. Here's four more. And you could probably spot a little trend here. I just bought these. So, you know, Thor... Love and Thunder has come and gone. Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness has come and gone. So anything related to Secret Wars, Incursion, uh, Multiverse sort of thing. Uh, here's Secret Wars number three. Nobody seems to be talking about these anymore, so this is the perfect time for me to go in and grab them. Picked up three more. Secret Wars number one. I believe these were all right around cover price. All right, uh... Another artist that, if I remember right, what I did is I put in this artist's name and either there weren't really that many results or I was just kind of at the tail end of my, my order and my patience and decided to just grab this one and then check out. This is Noctera number 11, and the artist I was searching for is Dan Panosian, uh, and this is a great cover that he did to a recent issue of Noctera. I don't believe a lot of books came back in the search results when I looked, but this one did. And it was for a round cover price, so I grabbed this one as well. Now this one, uh, this <laughs> this one is really horribly beat up, and I think it was just probably kind of you could see. I'll take it out of the bag. This is A Force number two, and you can see right here, just heavily creased. So a really great uh, candidate for pressing. It does seem to have some kind of something, some substance <laughs> of some sort right on the cover in there. So I don't know if I could wipe that off. It demands a press. So let's put it that way. Uh, this is the first appearance of Singularity, and everyone was at one point pushing the A-Force 2 variant, the Stephanie Hans cover, as if it was Amazing Fantasy 15 or something. It was just pushed and pushed and pushed. She appears in the story, Singularity. Any A-Force number two will do if you're speculating on that. I understand the incentive, um, great Hans cover, but uh, this was way more affordable, just grabbing this at cover price. So hopefully this giant massive crease can be pressed out. The spine looks okay otherwise. Maybe it is a 9.6. That corner is pretty rough. But thanks Midtown for this one. Back to Middleton for a second. This is Wonder Woman 766. That uh, giant Midtown label over the front doesn't do this cover justice. It's just an amazing Middleton Wonder Woman cover. Love this book. This one I picked up before Age of Ultron number 10. This is the first appearance of Angela in the Marvel Universe proper. So this one just sort of sits around at places. It just uh, seems like a random book since she's not uh, here on the cover. And it's actually listed in fine condition, so that's interesting. Go ahead and take this out real quick. I'm curious to see if, uh, yeah, I, it it's really okay. Um, it absolutely needs a press, but there's just a bunch of creases all in the cover here that could just be relaxed with a, a bit of humidity and pressed out very easily. Uh, the corners look really nice, sharp. It's probably a 9.8 candidate after pressing. We'll look here momentarily and see what I paid for the book in fine condition. Here is Star Wars 26. This is a uh, relatively new release. Uh, they did not have cover A. It was sold out, that great EM Gist cover. Uh, this has a number of first appearances. It kind of took off and became like a $20 book. Uh, real quick, uh, but then the variant covers just sat around. Uh, I believe, according to cover price, these have picked up some value beyond cover, but Midtown had them. Uh, they were a limit one per customer, so I got one of the John Tyler Christopher action figure variants. Good timing with the Obi-Wan Kenobi show having just wrapped. 
pretty cool Obi-Wan Padawan action figure variant for Star Wars 26. And they also had the uh, Choose Your Destiny variant with Plo Koon, who's always joked as Dave Filoni's favorite character. But regardless, with this issue having all of those first appearances, a nice book to have and even better to get at cover price. And then the last book I got, I got two copies. I'll open one. It's just Grim number one, but it's the fourth print. I believe these are still in stock. Uh, this title, along with 8 Billion Genies, it's a couple of titles that, because I had stopped pre-ordering, I kind of missed the boat. I, I do believe in one of my Things from Another World uh, orders that I still have to open. There are some Grim number ones and some variants, and I do have a copy of 8 Billion Genies number one somewhere, but it didn't really go heavy on either title. So whenever I see a, a late printing or... or a variant cover at cover price. I just kind of go back and grab some. So it's a little bit of FOMO here, but I don't, again, I don't mind if it's cover price. Okay, so those are the books that I got, a pretty nice stack of comics, but now I wanna show you what I paid for them because I have placed orders like this in the past, and when I'm paying, you know, double cover for some of these or even triple, uh, the numbers don't seem to work out where uh, I kind of share what I've ordered and feel pretty good about the order, and then when I run the numbers, uh, it's a different story. So let's see if it's any different this time. All right, here is the order that I placed with Midtown Comics on August 28th, 2022. I learned my lesson last time where I waited too long to open up an order. The order was damaged, and then there was nothing that Midtown could do to help me out with a potential return. And so I just got this order and wanted to open it up in a more timely manner just in case they were damaged. And honestly, I think other than the A-Force number two, the books look to be okay. I mean, they're not all 9.8s, but somewhere in the realm of 9.2 to 9.8 without any damage in transit there. So that's a good thing. Uh, all in all, it was a $104.72 order. I paid $9.13 tax. Uh, I did unlock free shipping. And in this order, I distributed that $9.13 tax across the 29 books. And the total for each book added up to $104.72, which matches my invoice. And then I know my math is correct. Now, if I'm going to compare what I paid to cover price, just from a raw book value perspective, it looks amazing. Uh, a $258.28 gain. And it really has to do with the fact that these books were on sale. Like right here at the bottom of the list, Thor God of Thunder, number one, the cover price fair market value for this book is $22. Now, this book has been available at Midtown for as long as I can remember, probably since 2012. And every time I'd place an order, I would just say, oh, look, they've got a Thor God of Thunder, number one, it's $14. It's around $20 fair market value. So since it's under the fair market value, I'll just go ahead and grab one and I'll just add it to my order. Uh, and I've done that a few times. And this time, with it being discounted so heavily down to, it was probably $3.99 or something like that before I added the tax, I figured I'd go ahead and grab five. So I paid $4.06 uh, for each of these. Uh, and again, some of these, uh, some of these books like Thor 1, it's uh, contributing to that very large positive value gain in the raw book perspective. Some of them even on sale were, were kind of break-evens. Uh, the Batgirls were not as valuable as I thought. But again, on the other hand, I appreciate Middleton as an artist, uh, as a cover artist on Batgirl and Wonder Woman. And so my working theory was if I can get them around cover or certainly less as I did here, at $1.44 an issue, that they would have more value if graded in a 9.8 because there would be an appreciation for that artist within kind of a framed slab. Kind of what I'm thinking, I'll, I'll, I'll check here momentarily if that worked out or not. But that's where it was not worth buying these books for five bucks each, but for $1.44, to me, it was totally worth it. And go figure, that A-Force number two that, that had that really, really bad stack increase I paid $4.14 for that book. Uh, the fair market value, according to cover price, is only three. So that one was actually uh, a loss. It might have been the only book that was a loss. Uh, Star Wars number 26, uh, those again were cover price books. So you could see here the action figure variant 
it cost me four dollars and thirty cents and it's worth nine and then the corresponding choose your destiny uh with Plo Koon on the cover that one's 14 I really would have thought the action figure would have been worth more than that but uh nevertheless uh both at cover price got me a nice value gain on that Secret Wars number one I had been buying that book for about seven or eight dollars uh it's currently valued at 19 dollars raw by cover price and I got each of those for a little under five dollars each so a nice 14 dollar gain on those and then the other five Thor books, Thor number eight, has a $23 fair market value, and I paid $5.31 for each of those for a $17.69 gain on each of those Thor number eights. And one more Batgirl book, Batgirl 36, $1.44, and Age of Ultron number 10. It was listed in fine condition for $1.86. I did not mind paying $1.86, whether it was fine or near mint and definitely believe it is a candidate for pressing. Uh, it is still only a $5 book, though, raw. Now, if I were to grade all of these books in near mint, they would be 9.4. So if I flipped all of these books to 9.4, let's take a look and see from the CGC perspective if they had any value. And some do have value. That Age of Ultron 10 is a $68 book in a 9.4. It looks like that one is the most valuable. Most of the others don't have a lot of value, these being... Uh, modern or newish, uh, new release type books. Uh, Thor God of Thunder number one, fifty dollars in a nine point four. Uh, you know, if I were to send that in for a pre-screen, maybe I dial the pre-screen back to nine six instead of nine eight because, or even nine four, uh, because of some of the values here. But not bad at all. And this is also what I talk about in terms of lowering your risk. The fact that this is a a fifty dollar book in a nine point four made it a no-brainer to spend four dollars on these books because if there were some of them that were nine fours still uh i could make the argument that it's worth your time to send these in for grading as is maybe they could certainly be pressed but if for any reason at all they came back a 9.4 still lots of value here now the fun part though is what if there was no damage in transit and i could uh, get nine eights on some of these what would the value of the order look like there so if i flip all of these to nine eight and look at the total CGC value, we've got a potential gain of $1,387.11 just on this order alone. And why is that? And I think it's because I took the plunge and bought multiple copies of books that I was aware of. Thor God of Thunder uh, more than doubles its value from a 9.4 to a 9.8 at $114 each. Secret Wars number three kind of out of nowhere is $150 in a 9.8. That's crazy to me. I would love to get a 9.8 in that book, and I, I would be more than happy to part with that one. Uh, that just seems ridiculous that that specific book uh, is worth $150 when you can grab it from Midtown at cover price. Superior Spider-Man 32 at $166. Secret Wars number one, holding strong, a little under $200 for a 9.8, so I have three chances here. Uh, to try and get the 9.8 on that one for a nice $158.35 gain. And just rounding out the order, no other books over 100. Age of Ultron at 78, uh, Thor 8 at 61. And I just want to kind of look at those Middleton covers just to kind of see, you know, was my theory correct? And it was semi-correct, I would say. Batgirl 36 and a 9.8 is 45. Here's Batgirl 27 at 68. Batgirl 29, only 33. Batgirl 35 at 55. Here's another one at $54. So all in all, it was not necessarily entirely true that if you can target a particular artist and get a nice run of their books in a 9.8, that they would all be $100 or above. You know, these are probably settling in anywhere from like 35 to 55, something like that. Still, at $1.44 a book, it was worth it to to pick those books up again because there's a market right it's that there's a specific market for that type of book i don't have to create one i don't have to explain to you a significance of an artist or uh maybe it's an artist that i discovered because i was on deviant art one day and i saw them and then a random store signed them up as an artist and i i helped discover them and they're amazing and i'm tr i'm trying to influence you and stir up demand for a, a book and an art. like again I talk about that being a full-time job that I don't have time for 
Middleton's already established, uh, well known, and there are already comic book collectors that appreciate his books. And there are hundreds and thousands of creators just like that, where the work is already done for me. There's already a great appreciation for those stories and the art in those books. So I don't have to create a market where there isn't one just to sell a two or three dollar book for 20 bucks. I can grab a great Middleton Batgirl cover for a dollar 44 off Midtown, hope it grades out at a 9.8. And then if I needed to, I could maybe move a couple of those slabs for around $45, $50. And if I were to sell a couple of them, then I would have paid for this order completely and still had a lot of value left over. So all in all, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this order. I do have to grade the books, see how they grade out, make sure I'm not missing any any damage anywhere. It doesn't mean I'm a regular customer of Midtown again, but I will make exceptions like this when the books are so heavily discounted. And there are a few of these books that I wouldn't consider to be keys. They just kind of sneak into their inventory somehow, or they they just kind of exist and, and people aren't snatching them up and they don't really know what they're their worth. And this is where I try to really marry the analysis that I'm doing on values with the availability online. And I end up putting an order like this together. And this to this to me, at least on paper, looks to be a pretty, pretty positive, valuable order of comics that I can now add to my collection. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.